now turn to lesson 21, which after going through all the lessons on participles, I think lesson 21 should be easy. Maybe not, but I think it will. Lesson 21 is about contract verbs. So what is a contract verb? Contract verbs are verbs that end in alpha, epsilon, or omicron here. So you can just look through these, the words you're going to memorize for this week. Uh, pretty much most of them have either an alpha or an epsilon or an omicron as the final letter of the stem. And those final letters contract with their endings. And so that's um, that's why they're called contract verbs. So what's going to be really important here is 146, your con this contraction chart. Uh, mark this. You'll probably come back and look at this a lot. But here, I'm just going to explain how it works, and then we'll look at examples in the back of the book. But so here's the alpha, the epsilon, the omicron. And when these meet with these letters on the top in the, in the endings, um, so think of like the third person singular would be the epsilon yoda ending. So like lego is I speak and then uh, lege is he speaks or she speaks. And so when you have a contract vowel that combines with a third person ending, it's actually going to contract to an alpha with a yoda subscript. And then the same thing goes with an Omicron, Upsilon, um, all these. You can just, this chart will just help you know how these contract vowels contract with their endings. So let's, if you look at the back of the book in the paradigms, they give you the paradigms of contract verbs. So I'm going to blow this up here. Okay, so here is the the Omicron contract verbs. And you can see here in the parentheses, these are the full form before the contraction. And then over here next to it is what it contracts to. So you can see here, pleiro'o, which is the word that you memorize, never actually exists because the omega and the Omicron contract to an omega and then with a circumflex over the top. And look here, pleuro ace, these contract, the omicron, the epsilon iota contract to an omicron iota. So pleurois, with a circumflex over where the contraction happened. You'll often see that, the circumflex marking where a contraction happens. And here we see pleuro a, contracts the form play roy with a circumflex and so on. You can go and see how they contract. And then poieo, this is smaller here. Poieo becomes poio in the first. Poieace, he just contracts to poieace. Poieae contracts to poie and so on. You can go and look how they contract or here. Poi et omen becomes poi umen. Those contract, and you see the circumflex over the top. And you can look through agapao as well. So, like, let's third singular, we have agapae contracts to agapa with an iota subscript. Um, so, it's probably helpful just to, to sit down with your contraction table and with these paradigms in the back of the book and just see if you can make the connections between the contract vowel and then how the endings, the ending letters contract with that contract vowel. And then noting the circumflex where the contraction happens. Okay, so back to the chapter here. Um, talked about the contraction chart. And then the accents, we talked about the circumflex. That's the main thing you need to uh, understand there. It gives you some principal parts. It notes that kaleo is irregular in that um, 
normally, so like here in the future, la leo becomes la leso. In the future, the epsilon lengthens to an eta. And you can see that the pleiroo in the future, pleiroso, with the omega lengthening. So the contract vowel will lengthen with a um, with a sigma and a kappa added to it. Where that doesn't happen with kaleo for whatever reason. So just note that irregularity. Okay, then it turns to reflexive pronouns. So these are translated as um, myself and yourself and himself, herself, itself. Uh, and if you notice, there's there's nothing new here. They're all the same forms. Um, so genitive, you have the u, o, on, uh, in, or in the masculine here, feminine, ace, a, ain. These are all standard endings. You just have to know a new word, basically. But notice here that in the singular, you have the emau versus in the plural, the the mu drops out. You just have eau. The same thing goes with the of yourself. You have se out, which drops to just hey ao in the plural. But then the third person, it the whole thing is this hey ao to hey ao tone. Um, but all of the endings are just your normal second and first declension endings. So nothing new to learn there. And then they also give you the forms of pas, pas, pas upon. And notice these look exactly like participle endings. You have a new tau plus the third declension endings. Um, so there's no new endings here as well. Um, if you know the participle endings, you're going to know how to form pas, pas upon. And then it gives uses of pas, pas upon. And you can look at those examples. I don't think these are too hard, but. You translate it as all, every, or whole, um, depending on context. All right. So with that, we're on to exercises and practice. So, we're